sasa kupigia mamangu akakuja kaniuliza kwa nini babako amefanya most of us are scared of the devil because of its evil deeds as christians believe the devil has come for nothing but to kill steal and destroy however what of humanity culture and values how in the whole world would a father sleep with his child lakini like babangu alikuwa anakataa anasema hapana then ikafika mahali jaji akasema it ni must tufanye dna juu amekataa I kid you not it's beyond the thoughts to imagine how a father would do such a thing. Hakuna siku yote ambayo ulijaribu labda kupiga nduru kupiga kelele watu wakusaidie. Hapana. But before we ask ourselves a lot, let's get to know the story of a father who sleep with his daughter. Imagine and you say there are good I'm 25 years old. This girl wasn't destroyed by her friends or siblings but by her father. She always wonders what she could have ever possibly done to deserve all the abuse he did to her. But the mystery remains unsolved in her mind. She spent many years being sleep with her father until she conceived and gave birth to this child. Sometimes in a jua I actually think everything. I always ask myself the kind of family relations I have with this child of mine, but I can't get my mind on it. Sometimes I see him as my brother. Sometimes I treat him as my child, and sometimes I don't know what to call him. I tried my best to ignore what happened to me to heal that wound, but still failed. She is terrified that her father can kill her, their child, and her mother at any minute. I bet you are also asking yourself as many questions as I am. How can a man with a wife turn around and lay with their child he has given birth to? He could have got as many concubines as he wanted, but his child? May God heal this child. Even so, why didn't she shout for help before she reached the point of having a baby? Or maybe that's what's making her ask for asylum. Imagine and Joyce say there are good. I'm 25 years old. Joyce Wahithira Ngugi, a 25 years old young lady, was born and raised in Nakuru town, northwest of Nairobi. She grew up in an average family with her mother and father. Joyce loved and enjoyed studying, but because her family could not afford school fees, it was very difficult for her. So, she would ask her father for school fees because he was the least able to give it to her. Once she asked her father for money. He told her that there was something they had to agree on first so he could think about giving her school fees. He did not ask her to do school exercises, revise what she had learned, or become number 1 in class as many parents ask their children. Joy says this did not start then because her father showed her signs even before she started school but she didn't understand the signs because she was still a little girl. Mimi kwa raif babangu alianza kunisumbua nikiwa 12 years old. My father started showing his lust for me when I was only 12 years old. He used to come to my bedroom and would begin to caress me. It came to a point where he couldn't stop himself and came on me with all his strength. Oh yeah, you had me right. I was in junior high school then, so he came to my bed and said he wanted to sleep with me. His motive to sleep with me was because they had kicked me out of school. So he told me that we had to sleep before he paid my school fees. As depressing as it sounds, I also found myself agreeing to sleep with my father, and it didn't happen once because he came back the second time when they kicked me out of school again. By then when I came from school, 
he was home so i told him that they sent me for school fees money and he said to me that we should sleep first i agreed because i loved school so much that i didn't want anything to stop me from going to school for the third time we were at home I said to him another problem I had about school. Again, he said that if I wanted him to solve my problem, we should sleep together. However, this time I refused and said no to him that it won't happen again. I will rather stay at home and stop my studies if necessary. But he continued to force me, saying that I should change my mind, otherwise I would never study again. Therefore, I found myself sleeping with him again. and that's when he made me pregnant Joyce lived this life of sleeping with her father for days during that time no one else knew but the two of them she says that her father had threatened her that he would kill whomever she would tell or whoever would find out about them hakuna siku yote ambayo ulijaribu labda kupiga nduru kupiga kelele watu wakusaidie hapana I never screamed or even asked for help all the times my dad abused me. He had threatened me not to tell anyone that we were sleeping together. In brief, he scared me enough to the point I couldn't tell anyone, not even my mother. I decided to protect my mother's and friends' life so my father would not kill us all because I was really afraid of him. Come na viona, ero mne kidogo. Mamangu alikuwa na lala hapa. Babangu alikuwa na lala pale. Na sisi watoto tulikuwa tunalala. Tulikuwa tunalala hii sasa. Sasa dio hiyo kitu hii happen. Mimi nilikuwa nimelala. Nikiwa peke yangu pale kwa kitanda. Na yeye babangu pia akakuja akanikuta tu nikiwa peke yangu. Sasa ndio hiyo kitu ika happen. Because she was young, Joyce did not know she had become pregnant. She continued to stay at home until the pregnancy grew. She showed her father and he prevented her from telling anyone about it. However, her father got so scared and ran away from home. When her mother noticed the pregnancy, she asked who had impregnated her and she kept quiet because she was afraid that if she told her mother, the father would come back and kill them all. When it was time to give birth, Joyce gave birth to a baby girl named Jane Wangowi. A few weeks after she gave birth, her father came back home because she loved school so much. Joyce asked her father to send her back to school and study. Her father told her that to pay for her school fees again, she should sleep with him again. Oh yeah, you heard me right. Of all the horrible things I have ever heard, this was beyond my thoughts. Should I call this father a monster, the devil or what? I kid you not. Only God knows what awaits this so-called father. Nikaambia babangu juu sasa nimepata mtoto na naweza rudi shule. Akanambia hapana. After giving birth I approached my father and told him I wanted to return to school since I delivered the baby. He told me that if I wanted to continue studying, we had to sleep with him again, saying he would love me to have his child again if I wanted to return to school. He had never offered me any other money apart from school fees. I didn't tell my mother or my friends because I was afraid of what my father told me would do. His motive to sleep with me was only based on school issues. As soon as this girl heard her father's request that they should have another child, she felt disgusted by herself, released her fears and had a brave heart to say it. By then, she wanted to die because she was tired of the violence her father had subjected to her after all. She always wondered what she had done to her father that made him abuse her to that extent. nikamwambia hapana After getting tired of being abused I told him I would never sleep with him ever again and left Therefore I went to the village leader told him about what my father did to me 
and explained that the child I had was my father's. He immediately broke into tears because it was complicated for him to understand. He asked me if my mother was at home. I told him my mother had gone to work. He immediately called her and my mother came. As soon as my mother heard the story, she fell into a coma. Her mother was very saddened by that story and lost her mind. They immediately went to Naivasha because it was there that the court was. They wrote a transcript of what the father was doing to her and they started the trial. Still, her father denied the abuse crime and said the child was not his until the court decided they should take a DNA test to determine if it was really his child. <laughs> When we left home, my mother was weak, so they told us to go to Naivasha. When we reached Naivasha, they told us to write a transcript of what my father did to me, and we immediately wrote it. So the trial started. We went to the court every day for days, but my father denied everything, so the judge ordered a DNA test to see if the child was his. When we left the court, we were worried about where the money to do the test would come from. But the village leader gave us the money, and we did the DNA test. In three days, the test was ready. It was sent to Naivasha court. They called us, and so I went with my mother and some of her friends. They read the results, and it said that the child is his 99%. My father was immediately imprisoned, but told my mother he would kill me if he got released. Since her father was imprisoned, Joyce fears that if her father gets released, he will kill her, their child, and her mother, as he used to say, and that is why she's asking for asylum. <laughs> He told my mother that if he gets released, he will kill me. So I'm humbly asking anyone who can help me find refuge for me, my child, and my mother, because I do not doubt that he won't do what he said, since he even said those words in the face of my lawyer. So because of all that, we don't have peace and my life is in great danger. Although I don't clearly remember, my father might get released from prison this year or the next year. Joyce had a deep wound caused by her father. Until now, she's still wondering what she did to her father that caused him to abuse her. She sits down and wonders about her relationship with her child, but the mystery remains unsolved. Sometimes I see this child as my brother, sometimes I treat him as my child, and sometimes I don't know what to call him. I tried everything possible to heal that wound, but I think I will need the miracle to move on. The child she had with her father was born with a leg deformity that requires non-stop treatments. Joyce is going through tough times because she's living in poverty and in fear of her father, who might get released soon and come to kill her as he promised. Her heart is full of grief. Sasa mtoto anakuanga disabled. Migu yake my child was born with leg deformity. I used to take him to physiotherapy, but he did not recover. As of today, we are together here at home. I'm asking for help to send my child back to the doctor for treatment and return to school after she gets better. In addition, I need help myself. I need money to buy food, pay rent and school fees. If you really feel like doing it, please do it. It will mean a lot to me. The main help is sending the child and me to school, treatment for my child, and paying the rent. Donations are collected through the Giving Life link in the description of this story and above in the first comment. 
story by Byiringiro David and narrated by Vanessa Mtesi. Thanks for watching. This is Afrimax English. Please remember to subscribe.